Well, hello there, and welcome to this business tutorial class presented to you by O3 Schools Jambath. Um, O3 Schools Jambath is a mobile application which you can put on, well, yes, your mobile devices and also your laptops. And um, all it does is that it gives you a wide variety of features which help you as you prepare to take your jam. Um, for example, there's a question search feature which personally I find very delightful, with which you can actually search for questions pertaining to different topics as you read them. So I could study same motion on my textbook, and then I open my three schools jump up. I'm able to search for questions having to do with motion and then answer those. So it helps you know read in an organized manner. Then there's also of course the mock exam feature and many other things to help you learn. However, on installing this app, these features are not all automatically available to you in completion. You have to activate your app first. And activation of this app costs um, 2,500 Naira only. And um, on the app, all you simply have to do is, once you click activate, follow the steps. There are several different ways with which you can complete your payments. Simply choose one that works best for you and complete your payment. On doing so, your app becomes activated. It is very, very, very easy and trustworthy. There's, there's no fear that you would pay on your app number activated, no. Once you pay, you have the guarantee that your app will be activated. So get your three schools jump up, activate it, and you can follow me as we go through this class and even learn more on your own. Well, in this class, we shall be looking at equilibrium in liquids. Equilibrium in liquids. Now, um, in the previous class, we studied equilibriums in solids, when you deal with solids, objects, and forces, and others, we did those analysis. In this class, however, we shall be focusing on equilibrium within liquids. Now, the easiest way to visualize this is take a bucket and put in an object. Now, this object has mass, and consequentially, it also has weight. And as we know, the weight of an object always act downwards. However, with your experience your daily life, you must have realized that when lifting this object while it is within this water, it is very, very easy. But once it comes out, the weight seems to increase. Like if you are trying to take a pill or if you prefer a container of water out of a bucket, like you know, you put it in, you can use one finger or two to push this can around within the water and it's very, very easy. But on lifting it out, one finger or two longer works, you have to hold it well. That's because the weight just appears to have increased. Well, the reason for that increase is something we know as uptrust. So, once an object is within a liquid, it expresses an upward force, which is known as uptrust. And this uptrust is what is added to your own force that makes it easier to raise this because you now have contribution coming from the uptrust. Now, what are the factors that affect this uptrust in the body? Well, number one is the density of the liquid. The density of the liquid is a very key factor for uptrust. The more dense your liquid, the more the uptrust. The less dense, the less the uptrust. Then also, the volume of the object submerged within this liquid. So, if something big is within this liquid, this expresses a bigger uptrust than something of a smaller volume. And at the same time, if you have a big object that is partially immersed within the liquid, only the volume within the liquid contributes to the uptrust. The part above is a non-factor, just the part within the liquid. And as such, uptrust can be quantified by saying, that uptrust equals to, well, simply the weight in air minus the weight in the liquid. WA -E represents weight in air, WA -E is weight in liquid. Or, it can also be given by saying 
the density of the liquid, that's the L, times the volume immersed times G. And that is up thrust. Now there's a law which looks at up thrust and um, from the Greek philosopher and mathematician Archimedes. So we call this Archimedes principle. And it simply states that an object submerged in a liquid experiences an up thrust, which is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. So it experiences an up thrust equal to the weight of this liquid, which was displaced by D objects as Archimedes principle. However, Archimedes principle doesn't really tell you that this object should sink or float. Once you now look at sinking or flotation, we now got something known as the principle of flotation. The principle of flotation. Now this is what governs whether an object should sink within a liquid or float within that liquid. Now, what does this principle states? It's simple. It simply says that an object will float in a liquid if there's experiences an up thrust, which is equal to the weight of the object. And yeah, if this weight becomes equal to the up thrust, that means there is no longer any net force acting on the object. It doesn't have to go down. It doesn't have to go up. So the object simply floats within that liquid. That is the principle of flotation. However, there are factors that you can use to enhance your flotation. Well, number one is the density of the object itself. Objects which are less dense than water are going to float in water. If the density is less than the density of water, it floats in water. That's one. Then two, the geometry, the shape of this object. Because you are trying to gain uptrust, remember, you have to displace volume. So you have to make sure you are displacing a large amount of water, a large weight of this water, so I can, you know, generate a big uptrust, so that that uptrust can be equal to your own body weight. So if your shape is such that you're not able to displace this volume, then the uptrust becomes small. Say, for example, um, if you are doing the dishes, and you take some of them, you know, all these plates that are more like the shape. When they are like this in the water, they float, or put them like this, and they sink. Why? Right now, this guy has a wide base, which is able to push against the surface of the water and displace a large volume. So it's going to float. But right now, this, once you are putting it like this, then the oily part pushing against the water it's just this very thin circumference. No other part is trying to displace water. And as a result, this is unable to float. The only time this can then float is maybe after sinking to a certain depth, and then this surface gets in contact with the water, and it is then able to push that required weight of water. So that is the principle of rotation. Now, having gotten this, the next thing we must look at, and we must definitely remember now, is we've mentioned density quite often. What is density? Density simply is mass per unit volume. How much space is occupied by mass of an object? So, density is mass over volume. Now, the SI unit is obviously going to be kilogram per meter cube mass to volume kilogram per meter cube but oftentimes we can get density given to us in grams per cm cube so in that case all you need to remember is that using water so remember density of water is 1000 kilogram per meter cube but also one gram per centimeter cube so you can use this to convert from kilogram per meter cube so, centimeter gram, rather, per centimeter cube, or vice versa. And now, speaking of water, there's one last concept to Mozokrat, and that is what is known as relative velocity. Relative velocity. Sorry, relative density. Relative density, not velocity, don't mind me. Relative density. Now, obviously, the name relative coming to play at all 
implies that I'm comparing it to something else. Relative density is the density of any material as compared to a density of a standard material. And in this case, we always take water as a standard. So it's going to be, first of all, the density of, well, anything really, density of material over the density of water. You see? Now, there are also other formulas. We could look at um, uptrust in liquid. Uptrust in liquid over the uptrust in water. This way, if we get the relative density of a liquid, then also there is weight of objects over weight of equal volume of water. You see, even this, then there's, you know, this is very, very simple. These are the formulas we use when calculating for relative density. So keep this in mind. Remember your formula for uptrust, formula for density, and we can solve several questions. Only special things just remember, in case you do not know this from geometry and mathematics, volume can be given as base area times height. So depending on your shape, you should be able to get the volume. Because at times, rather than tell you there's that volume, they may tell you, if, for example, you are dealing with a keyboard, and these are the dimensions, find the volume yourself. So things like that may come up. As we shall see, we will begin to solve questions, which is exactly what we're about to do right now. As usual, we are going to go to our O3 schools, jump up, bring down some questions, and tackle them so that we can see how to apply the various theories and formulas that we've learned. Now, without further ado, our first question comes from the year 2011, and it's question number 15 of that year. We are told, an object weighs 22 kg in water. So I'll call this weight in water, 22 kg, and 30 kg in A. We can see weight in A, WA is 30 kg. What is the uptrust exerted by the liquid, which is obviously water, on the object? Now, there's a very, very small thing here, a difference of language, if you will. They said this is weight, but the unit is kg. So I know that this cannot be weight. These are more masses, or apparent masses anyway, because weight equals to mg and should be in Newton. So if I want to put this as weight, then I must multiply it by g, which is 10. So the weight in water is actually going to be 220 Newton. And the weight in is actually going to be 300 Newton. So do not solve for weight in kg. No, we solve it in Newton. Now we have been asked to find the uptrust. And like we stated, uptrust is weight in air minus weight in liquid, which in this case happens to be water. My weight in air is 300 Newton. Weight in water is 220 Newton. And that gives. 80 Newton, and that is option A. So you see, very, very simple. Just remember our steps, and your solving is quite easy. Our next question comes from the year 2012, number 16. 2012, number 16. An object of volume, one meter cube, and mass, two kg, is totally immersed, that means the entire thing is put inside, totally immersed, in a liquid of density, instead of liquid, that's DL, one kilogram per meter cube. Okay, calculate its apparent weight. Calculate its apparent weight. Now, first things first, can I find density of the object? Yes. But do I need that density? 
Let's just keep that until we need it. Why don't we? To find the apparent weight, we know when you immerse it in the liquid, it experiences up thrust, and therefore, up thrust must be weight in air minus weight in liquid. This weight in liquid is the apparent weight. So, weight in liquid equals to up thrust minus weight in air. Is that true? No, because there should be minus, right? Because there is minus, there should be minus. How to make it positive? We have to switch this around and say, bring this here becomes positive weight in liquid. They will be having weight in A minus the up thrust. Okay. Now to get the weight in A, I just need to use the mass. Weight in A will be equal to mg, which is two times ten, which is twenty newton. Okay. Now I know the weight in A. I also need to know the up thrust. To complete my solving, up thrust is density of liquid as volume immersed times g. Now, in this case, the density of the liquid happens to be one. The volume immersed is also one times g, which is ten. One times one, one times ten, ten nothing. And as such, I know that. The apparent weight, which is weight in liquid, becomes weight in air 20 minus 10, and that gives you 10 newton. Looking at my options, that is option B. So you see, the summits are easy and straightforward. Just, you know, get your parameters and your formulas and you're good to go. Okay, question 3 comes from um, 2012. Question 18, 2012, question 18. This one says, a balloon whose volume is 300 meter cube, okay, balloon whose volume is 300 meter cube, is filled with hydrogen. If the density of air, density of air, let's just call that, is 1.3 kilogram per meter cube, Find the up thrust on the balloon. Okay, now this is one of those things you have to remember, please. Um, when we're looking at equilibrium in liquids, this actually also applies to equilibrium in fluids. Fluids comprise of both liquids and gases. Just that in most cases, the density of air is so small that it becomes practically negligible. The density of air is so tiny that the up thrust it generates well, is negligible. So we don't really notice it. But also, we are always in air. But in this case, we are dealing with hydrogen, something much lighter than air. And as such, the up thrust being exerted becomes rather significant. So, as we are aware, to find up thrust must be the density of the liquid. Or in this case, rather than liquid, it is being submerged in air times volume immersed times g so my uh, density of a is 1.3 the volume is 300 meter cube and g is 10 as usual so um, 1.3 times 300 that should be 390 times 10 is going to be 3900 newtons when i look at that that is obviously option c so you can see solvents are quite simple and straightforward and as such we move on and keep on attempting other questions this is our fourth question and it comes from the year 2013 number eight 2013 number eight a piece of cork crk floats in a liquid what fraction of its volume Will be immersed in the liquid now we know it is floating that's the key here we know because we know for flotation based on the principle of flotation the up thrust must be equal to the weight let's just know that first of all because this piece of cork is floating within the liquid now um we know that the density of the cork now let's call that dc 0 0.25 times 10 to the power 3 kilogram 
per meter cube and um, the density of the liquid with which it floats dl is 1.25 and stands power 3 kilogram per meter cube we want to find the volume immersed now how do we solve how do we solve now um first of all we know the uptrust equals to weight an uptrust is simply going to be density of liquid and volume immersed times g now what about the weight the weight must be mg only one problem i know density of liquid i want to find volume immersed i know g I know G, but I do not know this mass of this cork. So how can I get that mass? We have to remember that density equals to the mass over its volume. Density of the cork must be the mass of the cork. Let's put C there just to specify. Over the volume of that cork. And therefore, the mass must be its density times its total volume. Therefore, coming back here, density of liquid times volume of liquid immersed rather times g therefore becomes equal to instead of mass i'll be using density of cork times volume of cork then times g right there you see however g can simply cancel g out and remember we want to find the fraction of the volume immersed to get that fraction of volume i should be having vi over vc volume immersed over the total volume so to get VI over VC, I must divide both sides by VC. But while doing that, I realize that DL is still here. So we again divide both sides by DL. VC cancels VC here. DL cancels DL here. I'm left with VI over VC equals to DC over DL. So you see, this is just careful analysis. So you do not rush and make a mistake. And once we've done that analysis, our answer is going to be very easy to get because VI over VC must then be density of cork is 0 0.25 times 10 to power 3 all over density of the liquid 1.25 times 10 to power 3. These two powers can get rid of each other. And then um if I look at my options, it is in decimal form. So I don't have to stress myself. I can simply press this into my calculator and say 0 0.25 divided by 1.25. And that simply gives you 0 0.2. And um, that is option D. So you see, the solving is very, very simple. Take your time, follow the steps. I should get your answer. And uh, while yes, so person your exam may not have the time to go this carefully, practice does make perfect. The more you practice, when that day comes, you're able to work faster. And again, you should also know without the risk jump back, you can try to set your time on the mock exams. Actually, test your speed, not just your accuracy, both your speed and your accuracy, and see how well you can do. Okay. Our next question comes from the year 2015. Question number 27. 2015, 27. An empty relative density bottle has a mass of 30 kg. Let's say mass of bottle MB is 30 kg. When filled with paraffin, its mass is 70 gram. That's yeah, it's where you have to be careful. On its own, it's like this kg where on its own it had 30 kg when it is paraffin the mass became 70 kg when you are filling a bottle you're not moving the mass of the bottle as you be adding something to the mass of the bottle therefore if i added paraffin to this 30 kg and it became 70 kg the paraffin on its own must be 40 kg you see that's easy that's how you avoid making some small small mistakes we are being asked to find the mass of the bottle when it is filled with water. We want us to find mass of bottle plus water. 
point. This is that okay? And we have been told in our question that the relative density of paraffin is 0 0.8. Now, based on the fact that this question has to do with mass, my formula should automatically have to do with mass. If you remember, there was no mass in the formula, but there was weight. So here yeah, we can remember that mass of, or rather relative density, was the weight of the object over weight of equal volume of water. And we know mass and weight are interrelated, so we can say mass of paraffin over mass of equal volume of water. Its density is 0 0.8. Mass of paraffin is 40. We want to get the mass of water. So the mass of water must be, after cross multiplying, 40 over 0 0.8. And this gives me 50 kg. So how did I get my final answer? Remember, I don't have mass of bottle plus water. If mass of water is 50, then mass of bottle plus water must be 30 plus 50, which gives you a grand total of 80 kg. So I check my options, and that is option D. But if you look at option D, you notice they gave me the answers in gram. And now the question had a big top peculiarity in that they started with the bottle having mass of 30 kg. After being filled, it was now 70 grams instead of 70 kg. Uh, we simply work with this as a typo and solve everything in the same unit. I have designed it as a typo because an empty bottle cannot be 30 kg. And yet, after filling it, it became 70 gram. 70 gram is 0 0.07 kg. I cannot fill a bottle and have its mass become less. Therefore, I knew it was simply a typo and they should have been the same unit. So that's very easy. Next up, we go to the year 2015 and also look at question number 48. 2015, question 48. These are sixth solving. A body which weighs 15 newton in air. Weight in A is 15 Newton. Displaces 3.7 kg of water when partially immersed in water. You can see um weight of water will be 3.7 kg times 10. Converting this from mass to Newton, becoming 37 Newton. Calculate the uptrust on the body now if you remember from archimedes principle this body experiences an uptrust which is equal to the weight of liquid displaced therefore there's no reason to solve for doing that thing that's just to confuse you my uptrust must be the weight of water being displaced and that is simply 37 newton so you see some of us will be tempted to go and subtract the weight of A minus weight in water or something. That will give you 13, which is the options. But that is designed purely to confuse you. Archimedes principle is clear. A body submerged in the liquid expresses an uptrust equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. The weight of water displaced was clear, so that must be my answer. No further plus or minus. Okay. For question 7, we'll go to 2008, question 18. 2008, question 18. And in this case, we then say, an empty density bottle weighs 2 nothing. Weight of bottle alone is 2 nothing. If it weighs 5 nothing when filled with water, so bottle plus water is 5 nothing. And 4 nothing when filled with olive oil. Bottle plus oil is 4 Newton. I want to now find the relative density of the oil. You know that relative density must be weight of the oil, since it's oil I'm dealing with, over weight of equal volume of water. But I'm not going to use this 4 and 5, because this is bottle plus water, oil, and this is bottle plus water. Now, if bottle and water is 5, and bottle alone is 2, the water must be what? Very noting, easy, 5 minus 2. And if bottle and oil is 4, 
and put two alone is two, then all you alone must be four minus two to nothing. So from my formula here, width of oil must become two, width of water three. My options are in fractions, so I don't have to divide. I know my answer is option B. So you see, easy peasy. There is no stress whatsoever. And yet we move on. Taking a look now at question 34 from the year 2007. Question number 34, the year was 2007. A piece of iron weighs 200 notes in an air with an air 200 notes in and 200 notes in in a liquid with a liquid okay sorry piece of iron weighs 250 notes in an air this is 250 then 200 in the liquid of density density of liquid 1000 kilogram okay meters cube we want to find the volume of the iron. Now, the entire volume is being submerged here because it's not clear so it's packed. And um, we know the weight in A and the weight in liquid. Can we therefore get the uptrust? Yes. Uptrust is weight in A minus weight in liquid. That gives me 250 minus 200, which is 15. Now that I know my uptrust, I can use uptrust to get volume because uptrust equals to the density of liquid and volume immersed times G. The uptrust is 50. The density of the liquid is 1000. The volume is unknown. Let's write that properly. But G is 10. So 50 must be equal to 1000 times 10 is 10,000 VI. Divide both sides by 10,000 over 10,000. VI becomes equal to 0 cancel 0, 5 over 1,000. And as we are aware, 1,000 is 10 to the power 3. Simply bring it up, becomes 5 times 10 to the power minus 3 meters cubed. Checking your options, that is option D. TC. Easy, easy solvents. Just do not forget your formulas. Okay, and with that, we move on. This time to 2005, here we shall look at question 13. 2005, question 13. In this case, we are told that a 3 meter cube, that must be volume, obviously, the 3 meter cube volume. Of liquid W. So let's begin to specify properly. Volume of W is 3 meter cube. Of density, 200 kilograms per meter cube. The density of W is 200 kilogram per meter cube. Is mixed with another liquid of volume. Mixed with another liquid. Okay, so let's call this other liquid VL. Of volume, 7 meter cube. And um, density, 150 meter cube. So 150 kilogram per meter cube. We have to find the density of the mixture. Please note, when you find the density of a mixture, you do not just add both densities together and expect to get 350, which, funny enough, is in the options. That's why you solve the density of a mixture. Instead, you must know that density of a mixture must be the cumulative mass of both, mass of the first one, which is W, plus mass of the liquid, over the volume of the first one, W, plus the volume of the liquid. However, we do not know the masses. We simply know densities and volumes only. So can I get mass with density and volume? Doing it roughly here yeah, quickly. No density equals to mass over volume. And therefore, mass must be density times volume, implying that this becomes density of W and its volume of W plus density of L and its volume of L over the sum of the volumes. So, 
Now that we know this, let's simply get our answer quite quickly. Um, density of W is 200 times volume 3. And the other one is 150 and 7. All over volume of W is 3 and volume of the liquid is 7. 200 times 3 is 600. 150 times 7. Um, let's do that calculator. When you can solve with your head, I guess you do because it is faster. But if you are not 100% sure of your answer, then always use your calculator. So add these two together, that gives me 1650 over 10. Zero speed cancels out zero. And I'm left with 165 kilogram per meter cube. And as you can see, that is going back to our three screws up. That is option C. So you see, your solvents are quite simple. There's no reason to panic or anything of the sort. Okay, so we shall solve one last question on this topic. One last question, and we shall be able to call it a day on equivalent liquids. Question 10. This is from the year 1999, and this is question number nine a solid weighs 10 newton in air weight in air is 10 newton six newton when fully immersed in water the weight in water is six newton and then seven newton when completely immersed in a liquid x the weight in x is seven newton calculate the relative density of the liquid x now here you have to be careful. We are finding the relative density of the liquid, not the solid. Because the relative density of the liquid, we know that the formula simply becomes uptrust in liquid, because I'm dealing with the liquid, over the uptrust in water. You see, this is very, very simple. Uptrust in the liquid divided by the uptrust in water. Now, how do I get uptrust? Obviously, you no know, uptrust is weight in air minus weight in liquid. So, for the uptrust in liquid, that becomes weight in air minus weight in X. Over uptrust in water becomes weight in air minus weight in water. So, weight in air is 10. Weight in the liquid was 7. Let's write this properly. Weight in air remains 10, but weight in water was 6. 10 minus 7 is 3, 10 minus 6 is 4. And my answer in my options were all in fraction form. So I'm going to leave it like this. I indicate that that is option C. So you see, very, very easy. Please go to your three screws jump up and solve more. There's one pretty much like this. From the year 1998, question 15. Please do well to solve that, just like we just did. Um, do solve this and solve as many as you can find. Do that and you shall realize equivalent liquids is simple and not more than what we've learned in the course of this class. So, I want to thank you very much for watching this video. Do remember to subscribe to this channel for more videos on tutorials in different topics and aspects as you prepare for your examination, different topics, different subjects. And also remember your O3 Schools Jam app. Get your app and activate it to help you and achieve success in your examination. My name is Atanasius. Thank you very much for watching.